It doesn't matter what's happening. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what you are on or this person's on. This is what I like. You, you know, gotta watch my, my life is telling me for me. If I was going to be successful, I had to be successful with myself. I couldn't be successful doing what other people were doing. I had to do what I believed in. I like to advance every year to advance myself. Mm -hmm. You know, spiritually, mentally, everything. I like to advance myself. I have more fear going back than losing money. He's an American rapper and businessman. He's one of the best-selling musicians of all time, having sold over 100 million albums. He has an estimated net worth of $610 million. He's Jay-Z, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume two. Rule number one is my personal favorite, and I'd love to know which one you guys like the best. And as always, as you're watching, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it in the comments below, put quotes around it so other people can be inspired as well, and when you write it down, it's much more likely to stick with you as well. Enjoy. I love what I do. And then when you love what you do, you want to be the best at it. You know, you don't, you don't make music to be second best. You make music to be the best. So you, whatever you do, whatever you do, it don't have to be music. You're not sitting here trying to... Um, you know, be the, you know, be second to Pierce Morgan or one of those cuts. Zane Lowe. Z Zane Lowe. <laughs> you don't want to be the, you don't want to be second to Zane Lowe. You're looking at Zane Lowe like, are you kidding me? <laughs> in, in a good way. I mean, yeah, only, you know, in a good way. Like, are you, you kidding me? Like, I, I do this. Like, I've been doing this a long time. So sometimes you have to throw your stats out there to remind people your last shit ain't better than my first shit. Yeah. You know, it's a true statement yeah. to me. Like, there's a lot of people last shit ain't, I mean, it's, it's reasonable doubt, so <laughs> it's hard to beat, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, you just have to put your stats out there to remind people, like, yo, this is, you know, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the real deal. The worst thing to be is as successful as someone else. You know, like, that's a very difficult thing to upkeep, and it's very tiring. You know, I, f I feel sorry for someone who has to walk out the house every day as someone else to make this art and to make something that people um, connect to and whatever you've made is not you and you don't, you're not happy about it but it's successful. Just to maintain that level of success, is, it has to be very draining and you know, a very sad existence because at some point you have to go home and when you go home, you know, it, all the lights are off and all, everything's off and you have to look in the mirror and you have to look at yourself and say, Man, I like who I am, or I'm not very happy with who I am. By my third album, I had the combination of failing with those pop records and the true and real music that I wanted to make, and I blended those two together, and uh, I made a song called Hard Knock Life. And that album was when I knew um, that I can do it. No one cares whether you live or die, and that's where that mentality grows at. I'ma get it or I'ma die trying. If I don't try, what am I doing? What, what kind of life am I saving? Like these things is wicked in these mean streets. None of my friends speak. We all trying to win. We all trying to win, and a lot of times we bumping heads because we all trying to get out. That's like the crabs in the barrel mentality, you know, that we have because everyone's trying to survive. And they be trying to survive at any cost. You have to look at that. You got to look at the environments and places we live in and how things are set up and how things are structured and how we're always the last on the totem pole, even from our schooling to our roads to, you know, everything that, we, that all the obstacles that's placed in front of us, even our living conditions. Being broke is a great motivator. I have 26 <laughs> floors and there's a ton of them, right? These low income houses and everything is messed up there. So, Living, that's like living dormant. If this, if this is like, this is what I have to live for, then I'm going to take the chance to get more. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens to me. Do you people feel like people consume music too fast because you create these amazing moments, but then the moment is fleeting. As soon as you put the album out, it's like people are on it for a few days. Then okay, uh, J Cole came out. Wale comes out the next week. Wale's out now. Hov's out. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's just yeah. Again, again, the time that we in right, we we have to figure out. I mean, it's up to the individual how, to figure out how to slow it down because you know it's just going faster and faster. Everything is moving, you right. know, quicker. You know, information is going quicker. Uh, you know, it's again like you said. It, you know, these these great things are fleeting. They're mm-hmm. going faster and faster, and, and, and it's up to the individual to slow it down and be like, okay, I'm living with this album. This is what I'm. This is what I choose to ride to. This is gonna be the soundtrack to my life for these next couple months. The you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, that's yeah. that's an individual thing. I'm not gonna let anybody speed up my process. I don't care what's happening out there. That's 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 the great thing about you know having ultimate confidence in yourself is it doesn't matter what's happening. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what you're on or this person's on. This is what I like. You, you know, gotta watch. My, my, my life is tailor made for me. I've learned more from failures than success. And uh, it can be paralyzing this um, failure and the fear of it. My first album I made was an album called Reasonable Doubt, which in the small circles was considered the album, like a classic album, like the album for that generation and the voice of, you know, people that were going through similar situations. But it didn't sell massive numbers worldwide, right? It was still very niche. Then my second album, because of, you know, Reasonable Doubt and its lack of commercial success, you know, I try to make these records that were bigger and uh, will be more popular, um, which was a, f- a failure. Going for that success really messed up that project and, you know, set a bad tone. It was a huge learning lesson for me that if I was going to be successful, I had to be successful with myself. I couldn't be successful doing what other people were doing. I had to do what I believed in and what felt real to me and felt true to me. I started, even in my beginning, you know, I just lived such a rich life, you know, a full life. Mm. You know, that, you know, my first album was, I came out, I was 26, and I had seen so many things in the street. So my, my attitude was like, man, I... You know, I've, I've seen so much and, mm. you know, I don't have anything to prove. I know who I am. I'm a very self-aware person, you know. So when you're self-aware, even when you're dealing with someone's ego, you you, you know when to allow it to, you know, you allow their ego to uh, live in its own space. You know, it's, it's the, pro- the only, the problem is if you, when you, en- when you engage that energy, that's when there's a problem. Mm. If you engage the ego with your ego, then it's like, okay. Now something has to happen. It could keep escalating to a yeah. level that can uh, we be uh, irreversible, mm. you know. Mm. But if you don't engage the ego, if you know how to manipulate or play around with the ego, or, or that's that weird energy, in itself to people. And you give light back to darkness, you right? Know, it's it's very difficult. I have more fear of going back, going back to you know. I like to advance every year to advance myself, mm-hmm. you know, spiritually, mentally, everything. I like to advance myself. I have more fear of going back than losing money you know mm-hmm. cause I, like i said when i was I, i'm a lost money i've been broke i've been rich i've saved and blown bread mm-hmm. it's a lyric you know yeah <laughs> 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 oh boy but, it, but it's real you know money is just a byproduct and that sounds it sounds really cliche but it's, it's, it's true of, of doing a, you know a great job when, as it started approaching, you know, I got on this side of the year and started to pr- approach in September, I, I thought it was only right to bring it full circle, being that the first one came out on the 11th. Yeah. Um, and this being the end of the trilogy, to put it out on the uh, 11th. And this way we could recognize what happened that day. Because the first time, of course, it wasn't planned. Right. right. You know. But the thing about Blueprint 1 is people hold that album, like, sacred to their heart. Like, like that's a lot of people's favorite album. It's like a... A, a classic. My favorite J album. It's my favorite J album. Your favorite J album yeah. ever. And I'm like the underground, you know, backpack nerd dude. And I sing uh, Reasonable Doubt, but then Blueprint actually probably eclipsed it as my favorite J album, yeah. So then when you put out Blueprint 3, people are obviously going to compare it to the first one. Why didn't you just put out a, another album? Why did it have to be Blueprint 3? Um, I'm used to that type of pressure. I put out Blueprint. I put out Reasonable Doubt. You know, that was supposed to be the classic, you know. And, yeah, but you never know, did a reasonable about reasonable doubt too. Hold on for a second. <laughs> Call back, so I don't, Call yeah, back. That's, why back. that's why I would get up at six thirty, man. Two <laughs> guys cut you off and everything. I'm right, listening. Volume one, right? Then, right. right? then volume two, then volume three. That was another trilogy. So mm. I wanted this the blueprint series to be a, a trilogy because of what it represented. The first blueprint was, you know, those soul samples that I grew up on. It was mm. my blueprint. Then mm. the blueprint two was me searching for all the different type of music you know that I like 
but I ain't have a reason to do the third one. Mm. So I didn't do it for a right. while, and I, I held it off. I did the Black album after that, and then all those other albums. Um, but you know, it just was fitting right now um, where I, where I am in my career for you know me to set the blueprint for my next uh, journey. Rap and music is really a, a mic a microcosm of life. You know, my music is based on life and the things I've experienced. Like I made a song called Give It To Me, which was inspired and totally by a party that I went to by Mary J. Blige. If, if, when she hears that song, she knows exactly, because she was there, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. So it's pretty much inspired by life. So anything is inspiration. A lot of times you're flying at uh, 50,000 feet. You need someone to always keep you grounded. I have great friends around me who, you know, I don't shun their advice, you know, I encourage their advice, which I think is very important. You can live in your own alternative universe with how people treat uh, celebrity these days, but, you know, as long as you keep uh, good friends around you, and also not putting yourself in a box and becoming a prisoner of your fame. A lot of people, once they become famous, they stop doing things that they did. They don't go to the store. Uh, you become a prisoner of your fame, and I, I've always been, uh, aware and uh, cognizance of that, not to let that, allow that to happen to me. Little boy from Brooklyn, made it from the star. Girl out the south, made it to the shots. Okay, I'm freestyling this. Okay, so. okay. You just making it up right now? Here we go. Little what boy am I from supposed Brooklyn, to do? Made it out the star. Girl from out the south, made it out the shy. Uh, oh, made it out the shy. Girl, I'm out the shy. Made it out the shy. Only goes to show that the limit is the sky. If they give you lemons, then you make lemon pie. Oh, no, you gotta do it. <laughs> oh, that's good, man. Me, I'm from Brooklyn. Okay. That's style, so I made it out the star. You from out the south. You made it from made to the shy. It, made it to the shy. Shy town. town. Got it. <laughs> Only goes to show. Only goes to show. That the limit is the sky. Only goes to show that the limit is the sky. Life give you lemons and you make... Lemon pie. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it one more time. Okay, okay? okay? Start the beat over. I'm from Brooklyn. It's star. I'm star. I'm from okay. Brooklyn. Hey! Hey! That's okay. Well, you're gonna start it, right? Okay. <laughs> Little boy from Brooklyn, Little made boy. it from the star. Girl from out the south, made, made it, it to the shy. Uh, to the shy. Made it to the shy. Yeah, yeah, made it to the shy. You don't need the hand, just, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, no, just keep it smooth, you know. <laughs> swag, get your swag. Swag. You see, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Boy from Mount Brooklyn, made it from the star. Girl from down south, made, made it, it to, to the shy. Only go to show that the limit is the sky. Life gives you lemons, then you make, make lemon, lemon pie. pie. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because Eduardo Guzman asked me to. Also, if you want to nominate someone for the next top 10 video, please check the description for a link to a video where you can vote for people and put in your suggestions as well. I'd love to know what did you take from this video? What was the most important lesson that you learned that blew your mind that you're going to immediately apply to your life or your business somehow? Please leave it down in the comments below. I'm super curious to find out. I also want to give a quick shout out to John Jenkins. John, thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and doing the review on your YouTube channel. I really appreciate the support, man, and I'm glad you enjoyed the read. I just wanted to uh, tell you about this new book I bought. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. Someone has to experiment and go do it first. And then, you know, they'll be, the artists is, you know, artists will sit back and watch it and be like, okay, I like this, I don't like that, mm -hmm. you know, I like this part, and they'll perfect the methods, and then, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it all pushes the genre forward. Anytime that you try to do something different, and you should always try to, you know, push push forward, and, and whatever you're doing is going to be problems, because it's never been done before. So mm -hmm. you can't, again, you can't anticipate all the things that's going to happen. You know, I don't write anything when I'm recording. I don't write lyrics. I just listen to the music and I formulate the song like just 
off the top of my head, I just go over the lyrics again and again until I have the song, and then I just go in there and I record it. So it's definitely God-given talent, and it, and it was drive also. It was drive. I mean, it was tough. I mean, we toured the whole eastern seaboard because that's where our records would get played. We we yeah. couldn't we wasn't national yet, so we would tour all the way up to North Carolina. Oh, we just right. hit that area. Not even Atlanta. We just all up, all, all the way up to North Carolina. We would tour, just jump in the van, and just drive ourselves and just do endless endless shows. I mean, with twenty people in the building sometimes. Just that right. yeah. I always believing it would get better and better and mm -hmm. better. I just shot a, I shot a commercial um, when this album that came out, and it was like going back through times through all my album covers, and uh, you know I had to recreate them, and it was, and I realized how easy it was to recreate. I had the same haircut and the same thing in every single shot, so I don't know if I've been great at uh, reinventing myself, but um, as far as the company. We have the opportunity to reinvent ourselves for out of necessity of everything that's going on. You have to reinvent yourself. The playing field has changed. It's difficult in the music business because of the internet and everything that's going on. But if you're fearless, it's a beautiful time for entrepreneurs. The most fun I had in the music business was us having this little rinky dink record company and, you know, going up in radio stations and you know, other places as if we were uh, universal, you know, and speaking as if we, you know, we sold a hundred million records when we, in fact, we sold nothing. Um, so it feels like that time again for me because the models have to be redefined. And, and that's exciting to me. I, I don't know if you've ever done, right? It's almost like climbing a mountain and you see another mountain and you go to the next one and the next one. My goal was to have one gold album, and that was it. It became more from there, you know, and, and all the way up until the black album. Then it became I want I want I want to show that, you know, artists can ascend to the executive ranks. You know, it just kept redefining itself, you know, and which is why I took the, the presidency of Dev Jam. It just keeps reinventing itself and redefining itself every single day.